I want to welcome you to Living Life. You know, as we're living life, we really do want to see justice, right? But there's just so much injustice in this world. I know like when I had my credit card, it wasn't stolen, but people were using my number to buy things. I had someone purchase boots in New York City and I had to tell the Visa company, that wasn't me. And I really would like for whoever was misusing my card that they would come to justice. Or when I had, I knew that there was someone giving a donation to the ministry that I have and that check never came. And so I called the person and they said, well, yes, because it was cashed. And I said, well, it wasn't us that cashed the check. And I really wanted for whoever, you know, took a check that was for a nonprofit organization, a ministry, and they stole it, I wanted to see justice. Well, the reason why I share this is because Job, in our text today, he really wants to see justice. I mean, he's wanted to see that for his own life, but now he's looking at others and he just knows there's just a lot of, of injustice out there in the world. And he, he's gonna give kind of like a laundry list or an inventory of a lot of the different ways that we see injustice. And so as we turn to the scriptures today, let's really have an eye to see that, that Job wants to see justice. I think we want to see justice. And we know that God will, in his timing, bring justice. So let's now have ears to hear as the scriptures are read for us. Job chapter 24, verses 1 through 25. Why does the Almighty not set times for judgment? Why must those who know him look in vain for such days? There are those who move boundary stones. They pasture flocks they have stolen. They drive away the orphan's donkey and take the widow's ox in pledge. They thrust the needy from the path and force all the poor of the land into hiding. Like wild donkeys in the desert, the poor go about their labor of foraging food. The wasteland provides food for their children. They gather fodder in the fields and glean in the vineyards of the wicked. Lacking clothes, they spend the night naked. They have nothing to cover themselves in the cold. They are drenched by mountain rains and hug the rocks for lack of shelter. The fatherless child is snatched from the breast. The infant of the poor is seized for a debt. Lacking clothes, they go about naked. They carry the sheaves, but still go hungry. They crush olives among the terraces. They tread the wine presses, yet suffer thirst. The groans of the dying rise from the city, and the souls of the wounded cry out for help. But God charges no one with wrongdoing. There are those who rebel against the light, who do not know its ways or stay in its paths. When daylight is gone, the murderer rises up, kills the poor and needy, and in the night steals forth like a thief. The eye of the adulterer watches for dusk. He thinks, no eye will see me, and he keeps his face concealed. In the dark, thieves break into houses, but by day they shut themselves in. They want nothing to do with the light. For all of them, midnight is their morning. They make friends with the terrors of darkness. Yet they are foam on the surface of the water. Their portion of the land is cursed, so that no one goes to the vineyards. As heat and drought snatch away the melted snow, so the grave snatches away those who have sinned. The womb forgets them, the worm feasts on them, the wicked are no longer remembered, but are broken like a tree. They prey on the barren and childless woman, and to the widow they show no kindness. But God drags away the mighty by his power. Though they become established, they have no assurance of life. He may let them rest in a feeling of security, but his eyes are on their ways. 
For a little while they are exalted, and then they are gone. They are brought low and gathered up like all others. They are cut off like heads of grain. If this is not so, who can prove me false and reduce my words to nothing? Well, did you hear that laundry list of injustices? I mean, he gives this inventory of crimes and he really wants God to step in and do some judging on these people because there are folks that are out there who are stealing, right? They steal like property and we read about how they steal animals, they steal food, they steal clothes and they do that from the poor and from the orphan and from the widows. And it's just it's all this injustice. It's like, we want to see you, God, step in and do something about it. I know that there was a time recently when one of my elderly ladies, a widow, she had someone knock on her front door and she answered it and they said that they were from the utility company. And they just had a few questions for her. And so she was so gracious in answering them. But while she was doing that, there was someone coming through the back door and they stole her purse, they stole her jewelry, and then they left. And she just felt like she did something really special and nice until she saw that she had been robbed. There was an injustice and we wanna see that someone steps in and brings justice and catches those thieves. And if nobody, at least God, step in and do something about this. Well, that's really what Job is wanting as we read through this text. And later on in the chapter, we see that he brings out the idea of these people, they do all these dastardly deeds in the dark. It's like, that's when they go to work. And he mentions people like those that commit adultery and murder and burglary. And they do it in the dark when no one is able to see. And I just wonder, are they thinking that if someone cannot see what they're doing, then God can't see what they're doing? Well, we know that he can see and Job really wants God to step in. But he says this in verse 12. He says, but God charges no one with wrongdoing, or so it seems. And so that phrase, but God, is very interesting because you find it a lot in Scripture. And usually we see it's a time when God will step in and he'll show up and show off in a very clear uh, way. So, for example, I just want to give you three examples from the Apostle Paul. Like the first time that Paul gave a sermon in Acts chapter 13, he mentions that they took Jesus down from the cross and they laid him in the tomb. But God raised him from the dead. See how God steps in and he proves his his sovereignty, and we just see clearly that Christ is risen. He's risen indeed. And then in Romans chapter 5, it says that perhaps for a good man, someone maybe would die for them, but God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So, we see clearly like there that God is not waiting for us to love him in order for him to then love us. No, we can see clearly that God first loves us and he continues to always first love us. So when we turn our attention to him, his attention is already on us. Now just one more passage that has but God in it is found in Ephesians chapter 2, where Paul says that we were dead in our trespasses and sins, but God made us alive together with Christ. Oh, so we can see that Christ is alive and we get to have a life 
with him. I just want to encourage you as we're doing these living life devotionals that you know that you can be living life with the Lord. And so that comes as we are a disciple of Jesus. And so I just want to encourage you that as you go about your day today, and as you go about this week and forevermore, really, that we step into a time of following Jesus. So if there's anything that we're doing that is kind of going against the Lord's will, let's turn around. You know, the, the word that we would use is we repent. And repentance is not just for that first time when you come to know the Lord, but it's an ongoing activity. We turn around and we follow Jesus because he is our Savior and he is our Lord. And he says to each one of us, follow me. So together, let's take these steps on the road of transformation as we're living life and let's trust Jesus. And let's do so to God's glory and our joy. Well, as we close our Living Life devotional today, and I mentioned the phrase, but God, how it was used earlier in this chapter. Well, he mentions it again in verse 22. So here in Job chapter 24, verse 22, Job says, but God drags away the mighty by his power. And so these ones that are the mighty are actually the ones that are doing the injustice and they're using their power to control people and to take advantage of others, to oppress the, the poor and the needy. And so Job then says in verse 23, but God may let them rest in a feeling of security, but his eyes are on their ways. And so God sees, and we know that in his timing, he's going to exercise justice because God is just. But his timing is not always our timing. I know that I like to live with what we might call TV time. You know, you watch a program and there's a problem and then it's solved in less than one hour. But of course, that's not God's timing. He doesn't have to go according to TV time. Let's pray. Well, Heavenly Father, we know that we need to live in a way that we can trust your timing as we see so much injustice out there in the world. For Father, we really do want to see justice. And Father, we need you to help us to trust you in your timing. And so, Lord, I pray that you would help us in that endeavor. We thank you and praise you in Christ's name. Amen.